Welcome to In the Studio on Davis Media Access. I'm Tim Gaffney. Well, connecting the arts, fostering collaboration, and building community. That's the mission of the Arts Alliance of Davis. And Shelley Gilbride recently took over as chair of the Alliance. She's here today to tell us more about this important cultural resource for our community. Shelley also serves as the executive director of iHouse Davis, which provides a venue for sharing cultural practices and traditions from around the globe. She previously served with the California Arts Council and founded the organization PDA, Public Dance Acts. She has a PhD in performing arts and cultural policy from UC Davis. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you so much, Tim. Well, can you tell us more about uh, the Arts Alliance and the role that it plays in fostering uh, the arts in Davis? Sure. Uh, before I do that, I have to say that I hadn't heard PDA in so long. PDA Public Dance Acts was a project that I did so long ago to do dance flash mobs. But thank you for remembering that we did that. Um, so as you can hear, I have a long history in the arts and culture here in Davis. And what the Arts Alliance is, is really a networking group. As you said, it is a group of local artists and staff from arts and cultural organizations. And we get together and we really support one another. We learn from one another. We discuss shared issues and we advocate for the arts and cultural sector and make sure that arts and culture is thought of as part of solution sets to our problems in the community, as a uh, solution set, as a, as a part of our community well-being and personal well-being. Um, so we really are a networking group. It's all volunteer. We are all here just to support one another um, and to support the sector. That's wonderful. And, you know, as I look over the list of members, it strikes me that the membership is not limited to sort of traditional performance organizations or exhibition spaces. Um, could you say something about this, which, which strikes me as a somewhat eclectic and surprising group, which includes the co-op, the library, Yolo Hospice, and the cemetery district? What role do they play in this? That, so really when you think, if we are really saying that arts and culture is part of the solution set to problems as part of our community well-being, then we recognize that arts and culture can be built into everything that we do and should be because it is part of our collective well-being as a society. Access to arts is often really important for mental health. So the co-op, for example, does a lot, they have tons of art in their store um, itself and they produce events in which artists are brought in, musicians um, are brought in for some of their you know, food events in their parking lot. Um, and at the cemetery district, they do a lot of work around Dia de los Muertos and other, and they actually have a huge arts program. So we recognize that the arts is not just the theaters, the galleries, um, but also even in my own organization, International House Davis is kind of a hybrid organization. You wouldn't necessarily think of it like you would think a theater or a gallery. But what we do is we explore global issues and create community for the international people who come to Davis by using arts and culture and humanities. So a lot of these organizations are members because they utilize arts, culture, and humanities programs to fulfill their missions. So I want to ask you a question that I ask a lot of people involved in the arts, and that is, what is it about Davis as a community? We're not a, a large community. Uh, but we do have this thriving art scene. What, what is it about Davis, do you think, that, that allows the arts to thrive as they do here? Well, I think that there is sort of maybe an underappreciated history in Davis. Uh, UC, the UC Davis Arts Department had some of the most amazing and foremost artists of the, of the funk movement, Arneson, um, Tebow, and... Uh, um, Peterson, some of these artists are foundational in California art movements, and they all were here, and they founded, I think Davis is a creative place. Um, it's a place where if you have 
uh, the desire to get something done, you can. Um, I moved here from New York City, actually 16 years ago, and it was a place that I could decide to do a large scale flash mob with over a hundred dancers and do it at farmer's market and get it done um, and find the resources and a community willing um, and happy to dance with me, right? So that's uh, what Davis, I think there's a history there. And something that the Arts Alliance is doing is making sure that we are building upon that history here. We're working with the city. We work really closely with uh, the City of Davis Arts and Cultural Affairs Program. We have relationships to the California Arts Council and to Yolo Arts, our county arts agency, to make sure that we can still support artists and help the arts flourish in our town. And that was really what we did with COVID relief funds. We came together as a sector and said, what do artists and arts organizations need? Because we've all been so impacted by COVID. Um, and so we were able to rally together to talk to our elected officials, to educate the public about the impact that COVID had on arts organizations. We're social gathering spaces. Nobody could gather. Artists had nowhere to show their work, weren't teaching. And so we were able to come together and um, advocate for funding for artists um, uh, and arts organizations with COVID yeah. relief. So that's right. So that Davis addresses has been really supportive of the arts. Yeah, that, that was a question I was going to have for you. What what role the public agencies, whether at the city, county, or state level, play uh, in in making all this happen in Davis? And it sounds like a very important role. And a very yeah, one role. of the things that the Arts Alliance really does is make sure we have strong connections with all of our stakeholders so that we have strong connection with the city, we have a strong connection with our county, and we understand what the issues are at their level and that we can be part of the solution to those policy issues that they're dealing with. Um, and making sure also the Visitors Bureau uh, visit YOLO and visit Davis, that we have strong relationships there because when we do arts events, that's important for them to know about because they're trying to drive visitors and tourism to our area. And we want audiences um, to come to our, to our amazing arts events. So really one of the things that the Arts Alliance is doing is making sure that we have those strong connections with all of those stakeholders in our city and our region. That's great. Now, as the new chair of the alliance, uh, does that give you the uh, the room to move this alliance in any new direction, or uh, is this a, a sort of a steward position uh, on status quo? I think what, what, see that both of those things. I am following in the footsteps of amazing leaders um, that have established the Arts Alliance: Natalie Nelson from the Pence Gallery, and then Autumn Lava Renault of Davis Media Access um, really established the foundation. And so we're going to keep that foundation by maintaining our networking group, because what we really want to do, and especially we appreciate it so much more now, is get together and learn from one another and share ideas and share problems and work together as a sector. So we're going to keep that. And then, yes, we're building, we're thinking about what are the common needs post COVID, we work together. One thing that the city of Davis arts and cultural affairs program helped do is establish a relationship with Davis coworking, which is also a partner of international house Davis, but to give coworking space to artists and arts organizations, maybe that don't have a space or um, to give space for people to have meetings or get work done. Um, so that was one kind of shared problem that we all banded together and said, what, what's the solution that we could, you know, begin to do? The other one is we um, all really are, uh, want a shared calendar, right? So that we never want to compete with each other for our events. When somebody's doing a major event, we want to support that event. And then we want to make sure that we're supported when we do our events. So we're working together on a shared calendar. And the Davis Dirt has um, revamped their, um, both their online presence, but their physical presence. And so that was something that we kind of talked to the city. And I know the city uh, Davis Arts and Cultural Affairs Program really supported uh, the Davis Dirt to get back up and running and um, post COVID. So 
we work together right on these shared issues and so yes we're gonna figure out what the needs are we're doing a needs assessment and figure out what the needs are to continue moving forward so you've you've uh referenced your other role the other hat you wear uh, a couple of times so far but if i could ask you a little bit more about that uh both about you know the the sort of the arts and cultural uh piece of what I understand to be a very broad uh, programmatic approach of, of the eye house, uh, but also how your these two roles of yours align with one another as, as executive director of eye house and chair of the arts Alliance. Yeah. So again, I house is sort of this really interesting hybrid organization. Our mission is to support is to foster international understanding, build community and create cultural connections which is a really broad mission, but we primarily do that through arts, culture, and humanities programming. We have book chats with the Davis Humanities Institute. We have a language learning program. We produce international festival, which features all of the cultural uh, groups, not all, but many of the cultural groups in the region, um, music, dance, food from all over the world. Um, and we are building out our programming to hopefully support those iFest artists for more than just one day um, in October. Um, so we do a lot of arts and cultural programming and we are, I call us the community hub of international activity. So as a hub, we are a connector, a convener um, of people bringing, bringing people together to form a strong community, people from all over the world that come to Davis maybe for a short time or maybe to live here. Um, so we're a connector and a convener and the Arts Alliance is a connector of the arts organization. So my work in both organizations is very aligned. Um, the artists in town, the cultural workers in town, the arts administrators in town, these are my friends and colleagues. And so we, I work really closely with them many times anyway in my work at the I House. And so it, it makes sense um, to then chair this alliance, which really we're a group of volunteers. So a lot of being chair is just scheduling the meetings, making sure they happen, reaching out to my colleagues saying, what should be on the agenda this week? You know, there's administrative stuff that happens as chair. But the other side of it is to carry forward the mission and make sure that the arts and cultural sector is strong and vibrant and thriving. And so that's pretty much what the mission of iHouse is in an international context. Well, I, I have one last question for you, which is kind of a big picture question. And I, I don't intend to stump you on this, but I'm just curious, you know, you, the Arts Alliance, you know, suggests that there is just so much going on here, covering so many different aspects of the arts in Davis. Is there any gap in the the arts landscape in, in Davis that you would love to see filled? Ooh, okay. I'm putting my thinking hat on. Because yes, I think there are gaps. And it's not necessarily, oh, we need another dance company. It's not a gap like that. What it is, right. is we need the support system for artists to continue to come and live and work in Davis. Um, we need a support system. We need to make sure that we don't take for granted the creative community that we have because artists live where it is reasonably priced to live, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the major things that we need to think of as a community, and this isn't unique to Davis, this is California, this is, you know, our, our entire culture, right? In which the mm -hmm. arts are sometimes devalued, right? We often expect arts to be free um, and it's not free to produce the arts. Artists deserve to be paid for their work uh, that they are contributing to the world and to our community. So I think the gap is making sure that there's a support system and a network to support arts because the arts fundamentally are, 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 are not self-sustaining. Artists are self-sustaining, right? We, we sustain ourselves by doing our art but the arts are expensive to do. 
Um, and so we need support. And so we need support to make sure artists can continue to live in Davis, that they can get their work produced in Davis um, and the region. And that we also think regionally, Davis isn't an island. We work, you know, artists live in Woodland, they live in Dixon, they live in Sacramento and they're coming here and we're going there to do our work. Mm -hmm. And if we can think regionally um, that we are part of a, of a broader region of, of arts, culture and creativity, I think we're gonna, we're gonna thrive. Well, Shelley, thank you so much for, for sharing all this important information on the arts and your very thoughtful reflections uh, on, on what still needs to be done uh, in the arts community here in Davis. And thank you for the work you do, both as executive director of the Eye House and as chair of this Arts Alliance of Davis. So I have been talking with Shelley Gilbride, executive director of Eye House and chair, new chair of the Arts Alliance of Davis. And I want to thank all of you out there for joining us today. I'm Tim Gaffney, and you've been watching In the Studio on Davis Media Access.